Hello, and welcome to Part 46, my video is Chosen Blender 2.7. In this video, we'll be talking about fireflies and how to eliminate them. Now, what exactly are fireflies? Well, they're an artifact that shows up when you render a scene using the Cycles Render Engine some of the time. To show you what these look like, I've got a really simple scene here. I've got basically an enlarged stretched default cube with one of the faces at one end cut off. And inside this cube, which will be acting as our room, uh, I have a simple small flat square plane that's uh, one tenth of one button unit uh, on each side, so it's very, very small. And on that plane, we have an emission material. So it's at 100 strength, which means it'll be quite bright or sufficiently bright to light most of this room. I've got a camera set up at the end of the room to point into the room. Let's go ahead and render. So I'll go to the uh, camera tab and the render section and press render. So I've gone ahead and rendered out the scene at the default settings for Blender. In other words, we have 10 samples and what you can see is that we have all these white specks all over our image and these are fireflies. These are artifacts that we obviously don't want in our scene. So how do we fix this problem? How do we have the scene looking the way we want it without all these specks all over our scene? Well, your first inclination would be partly right. If you thought right off the bat that, hey, just increase your samples, that might fix it. Let's go and see if that works. Now, what does that mean? Well, under the camera tab, under the sampling area, basically what this does is this render setting here is set by default at 10. It's the amount of times, this 10 number is the amount of times that the light is calculated um, per area on your screen to make the image um, less grainy and more accurate and more clear. The higher this number is, the nicer looking your render will be, but of course that'll make your render take a lot, lot longer. By default, it's 10. I'm gonna go ahead and type in 200 and I'll press render again. All right, so we've gone ahead and rendered out the exact same scene, but this time instead of using 10 samples, we set the scene to 200 samples and we still have that grain. If you think back to when we used 10 samples, this is what we had. We had an image with lots of these white dots or fireflies on it and at 200 samples, it gets better, but it's still very, very grainy. So why is this happening? Well, for one, we're using an object, in other words, a mesh object that has an emission shader on it, and that object is very small, and it's very close to the ceiling in my room. So there's several things going on there. We're using a mesh with an emission shader on it, the lamp is very small, and it's very close to one of the other main objects in the scene, in this case, the ceiling. What, what would happen if we were to move that lamp object or the mesh with the emission shader on it away from the ceiling? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. I've gone ahead and rendered that exact scene out. And as you can see, the fireflies pretty much disappear. In fact, there are none in this example at all. This is great, but as you can see, it's casting sort of a shadow where the object's edge is not really casting as much light as opposed to its up and down surfaces. So, I mean, that's a good thing. We know that we can get rid of these fireflies by moving away any lamp from any object. Great, but what if you want the lamp object to still be up near another object like a ceiling? Well, another solution is to make that object larger. So what I did is I scaled this object out by, I think, about 10 times, and I put it back up to the ceiling. So our light is now back at the ceiling, it's just a lot larger, and this is what we get. Same number of samples, again, right up to the ceiling, but we get no fireflies. There is a little bit of noise here, though. As you can see up near the corners, it's a little bit grainy, although still very good, and I think that graininess would go away if we turn our samples up to, let's say, 500 or 1,000 or even 2,000, it would improve. So that's one solution. You can make the object larger or you can move it away from another object so it's not casting a hot spot. It's not really brightening up um, an object, making that object be a bounce light essentially, but a very overexposed bounce light, okay? So what's another solution? If none of these work for you or if you'd rather use a proper lamp object, you'll also get better results. What does that mean? Well, our light source right now is a mesh. It's just a flat plane with one polygon, four edges, and four vertices. There are lamp objects though, as you should know, if you haven't gone ahead and watched my video on lighting and rendering cycles, I'll put a link to that on the screen right now. 
lab objects are even better to use, and they don't show up in your scene as a large white object. So if you go to the Add menu and you say Add Lamp and then an Area Lamp, you can then set the area of the lamp, in other words, the surface size to the same, I believe this is two by two. And with that, we get this result. It's even better, there's even less noise, there are no fireflies, the lamp object is in the exact same spot, and I think it's the, about the exact same size, and the scene looks even better. So what you could do here is you could probably composite in another light object up here. If you try to put a light object in other words, like an orb with a white material on it, it might actually cast its own shadow, um, and we're not going to deal with that in this video, but as you can see, we're getting a good result here. Um, it just works. What happens if we scale that light down back to the original size, in other words, back to that small size of the original light? Well, that's what you get. It's just a very slight difference from that one, which is the large light, to this one with the small light. You can see as I toggle back and forth, that the light gets a little bit dimmer and fades off more um, at the side. So that's my room example. Switching scenes now, I want to show you a few other reasons why you might get fireflies or noise in your renders. I've got a simple scene set up here. It's got a few objects. It's got a ground plane, a couple of area lights, and a lamp. If you want to go ahead and download this exact file, you'll find a link to that in the description area below this video. Let's go ahead and take a look at this scene. I have, of course, a few area lamps, and I, I believe they are of size 1.0. They're square area lamps. I've got a few objects, a monkey head, a cylinder, and a cone. All three of them have different colored, just very, very simple, diffuse BSDF materials. And the ground plane is what's going to be causing a lot of our issues. Our ground plane has a glossy shader on it. You can add it, of course, under the Materials tab. Instead of a diffuse material or shader, we have a glossy glossy one here. So what happens when we try to render? Well, I'm going to go to my camera tab and just make sure my render settings are at 10, which they would be by default. And if I press uh, F12 or go and press render here, you'll see what the scene looks like. I have a lot of fireflies or a lot of noise or speckles on it, and I don't want that. Let's go ahead and try turning up the number of samples to, again, 200. So under the sampling tab, under the camera tab, render samples, we'll set that to 200, and I'll go ahead and press render. So it's finished rendering out, and as you can see, our situation didn't improve very much. We have a lot of speckling going on here. We've got some noise or fireflies at the base of these objects, all around the cylinder, and especially on the underside or the cheek of the monkey head. What's going on here? Well, the kind of noise that we have now is called caustic noise. What is that? Well, if you think of what caustic light is, you might think of kind of the marbly reflections that you get if you were to look under a pool or um, in just basically in any kind of a pool deck uh, where you have light passing through or being reflected by a glossy material or traveling through um, a transparent object with a different amount of density in it that causes that kind of marbling sort of a light. Blender doesn't really handle those very well, so let's go ahead and try turning off caustics or caustic lights. To do that, I'll go to my uh, render tab and under the uh, light paths area we can see that we have reflective caustics and refractive caustics. Now what these mean are if you have a scene with a transparent object, like a glass object, you might get refractive caustics which means the light actually bends as it's going through that material um, and so if you want to make sure that that's not the culprit you would uncheck that. If you have anything that's glossy or reflective you might get reflective caustics which is what we're seeing here right now with all of this greenness. So I'm going to uncheck reflective uh, caustics and we'll go ahead and press F12 or the render button again and see if we get a better result. So as you can see our noise is gone and our problem is solved. But wait, our scene doesn't look as good anymore. If you notice underneath the monkey head, we aren't getting that nice bounce light that we had before, although it was all speckly, it's what we would probably want to make the scene more realistic. In other words, we would have bouncing light coming off of the reflective ground up onto the monkey's underside of his cheek, and that's a good thing. So how do we get that back when not getting the noise? If I recheck reflective caustics and press F12 or click render, we get that nice bounce light back under the monkey's cheek and some of the reflections back uh, on the floor underneath the monkey's head. So how do we solve this? Well, there are many ways, and I wanna show you the most easy one first, and then we'll go into something a little bit more complicated. 
Um, to fix this problem, all we have to do is under this light path section, under the camera tab, we can turn up filter glossy. Now what this does is it basically takes the light, as far as I can understand, it takes the light after it bounces once, and it sort of blurs the light. Now unfortunately, the more you blur that light, in other words, the light that's after one bounce, the less accurate it becomes, but the more you won't see these speckles. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn up this filter glossy to 0.5, the default is zero, and if I press F12 or click render again, as you can see now, we have very few speckles. We could turn the filter glossy setting up to one or maybe even a little bit higher, but you would start to notice that the light being reflected was a little bit more muddy. You wouldn't get quite the nice definition of the brightness under that edge right there. It would start to look much more even, which is what you might actually want. Let's go ahead and try that out. I'll turn filter glossy up to one, and I'll go ahead and press render again. As you can see now, we have another good result here. Uh, if you really compare the last two renders, or this render versus this one, you'll see again that we don't have quite the same definition under the monkey's cheek, but again, we have a little bit less noise too, so it's up to you what result that you want. There is another way though, of course, to fix this problem. In fact, there's many ways. I'll show you one more. I'm gonna go ahead and turn filter glossy back down to zero, which of course will give us that noise back. But what I'll do this time is I'm gonna make it so that the floor does not act as a glossy material for the other objects in the scene, but we will still get to see that glossiness. If you think back to the video where I talked about sky color versus sky light, I showed you how to use the light paths node in order to stop reflective light from one object from bouncing onto another object. Well, we can use that light paths node in exactly the same way here. So I'll press escape on my keyboard to see my scene again, and I'm actually gonna change my view from just material down here to rendered so we can actually see what it looks like and I'll press zero to look through my camera. With the floor selected, and then it would be easier to do that if I actually have two windows here, with the floor selected I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at these nodes. We have a glossy shader here and of course a material output but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another shader a diffuse white shader and have that color be the one that's reflected up under the monkey's cheek and on the rest of the scene. So let's go ahead and press Shift A and I'm gonna add another shader. I'm gonna add a diffuse material here and I'm gonna add another, so Shift A and add another mix shader. Now what this will do is it will blend these two together and then we'll use the light paths node to make it so that we can only see this one, but the other objects in the scene only see this one. So I'm gonna drag the mix shader into that noodle there and then connect these two and I'll press Shift A. Now what you can actually see here is now we are seeing kind of a mix between this white or almost white. I'll turn it all the way up actually, like that. Um, what I need to do now is add a light paths node. So I'll press Shift A and I believe it is under input. There it is, light paths node. So I'll add that, click to put it right there. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make it appear as a diffuse material to the other objects in the scene. So I'm gonna uh, use this little uh, node here and drag it right here. And as you can see now, we're getting a really good result. We have our glossy material on top. We have our diffuse white material on the bottom. We've got our plugged in light paths is diffuse ray into the mix shader. And if I go ahead and press uh, F12, so as you can see, we've got our good looking scene. We haven't filtered any glossy, we haven't turned off any caustics, and that's because the ground is now just acting like a white floor bouncing up that light like it normally would on the underface of the monkey. In fact, I think we have an, a little bit too much light here. So what I would probably do is press escape and turn this diffuse color down to a lighter shade. If I make it much darker or a lighter shade of gray, and then I render again, you can see now that we have a little bit less light under his cheek, which means that we have a lot of control over the amount of bounce light in our scene. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.